Welcome back. We are here today with Matt Wirt, who is the Economic Development with Madison. So, how are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, Debbie. Thanks for having me in today. Look forward to, to kind of giving folks an update on what's going on in the great city of Madison in regards to economic development. So, yes. um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, we've got a lot of good things going on right now. Oh, um, awesome. A lot, a lot of positive momentum in our city right now, in spite of a rough, you know, rough several months with the right. pandemic. But... But we've made it through that in good shape and uh, look forward now to really get things moving. Oh, wow. Well, as a, as a business owner, yes. to let people kind of know how economic development works, yeah. as a business owner, if I come to town, what can I expect when I come into your office for economic development? Well, I'll have to say one of the first things in, in, in um, economic development 101 lesson is it's called confidentiality. <laughs> that's so a big one. That's a big one. That's a huge one. A lot of companies, a lot of businesses like to scout out some multiple locations before they make a decision with a lot of money and uh, they prefer not to really be seen a whole lot. Um, they like to come in what we call under the radar and uh, kind of look around Madison first. Um, so I would, uh, that's my first job is to, is to obviously sell Madison, promote Madison, but find out a little bit more about what they want um, because I'll be honest with you, we, we always look for a good fit for both the, uh, the prospect and the city. Um, so we want to make sure, again, confidentiality is number one, uh, but then I would find out a little bit more about your company, kind of what you're looking for in terms of uh, maybe land or an existing building, um, and then, uh, of course, uh, from my, my perspective, we need to talk about job creation <laughs> because that's what it's all about. We want to have livable, affordable, uh, we've got affordable housing, affordable community to live in, but we also need um, what we what we deem as a livable wage, right. where folks can grow and spend money. Um, so our county average wage is approximately nineteen dollars an hour right now, which is good. Um, but we want we're, we're looking for good paying quality jobs to to let folks live and and live work and right. play in Madison, as I like to say. And, and, and the, they've got to be able to afford to do that. Yes, and the reason you're saying that is because in order for you to look out for the city's money. Oh yes. This is an investment the city's making into a company, in yes, a way. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's a two-way street. We, we certainly appreciate the investment by a company like, right. like yourself, but we have to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. At the end of the day, anything we could provide to a company are taxpayer dollars, and it's up to the mayor and the administration and all, all of us, really, at City Hall to be good stewards right. of these taxpayer dollars that people work hard for. So. Um, there's a delicate balance there. There is. So if I came in and, and wanted to set something up for six months and leave, that's not really a good investment for the city. We No, that would not be a good investment for the good. city, and I'll be because honest with you. it's not ongoing. You, there's probably not a whole lot we could offer you to help, help right. with. Um, we look for long-term yes. uh, partners. I'll yes. call them partners in our city. And they are. They are. We want people that want to be here, that like Madison, and, and will invest in Madison, and then hopefully be involved in Madison. Get involved in some of our, we've got some fantastic boards and commissions and not-for-profit oh, groups here. Yes. The people we like our folks to be involved in. So that's what we're looking for, long-term partners. And right. we'll do everyth everything we can to try to help those folks um, grow here. Well, that's great. So, so now with the with the pandemic, you mentioned that earlier. How yeah. has that affected um, your department? Well, it's certainly it's it slowed things down to a to a to a crawl in terms of the the new leads, the new prospects. Um, even some of our existing companies took a pretty big hit yes. during the pandemic. Um, I'm happy to report, I believe almost all of them are are back up to speed and and running. Um, you know, slowly catching up. Um, but I'll say from the city perspective, um, Mayor Courtney was very committed to keep si keeping our city services functioning and up and running. Um, we didn't, I'll say we didn't miss a beat at City Hall. Um, all of our department heads, our employees worked tirelessly, honestly, throughout and this process. We, st we all stayed healthy. Yes. Every person stayed healthy. Now we did follow the health department guidelines and CDC protocols. We were doing our normal, you know, temperature checks and making sure we were following what needed to be done and mm -hmm. uh, to stay healthy, but we all stayed healthy. And the mayor, kind of, he, he challenged us. He said, you know what, department heads, he goes, look at, look at the things you would like to get done that you never have time to get finished and go ahead and do them now, yes. that things are a little slower. So right. um, we all kind of dug in a little bit, got some things done and off our plates that, that now, we're, now we've got time to go out and do the things we really need to get done and want to get done to grow the city. So... 
Um, we came through the pandemic, I'd like to say, in good shape as a city. Yeah. Um, you know, the mayor provided some good leadership through the process, and uh, really, uh, Madison didn't miss a beat, in my opinion. We did our, our jobs program, our temporary jobs program. Um, that was exciting. Um, Chief of Staff McGee spearheaded that for the mayor, and uh, we created jobs for folks that had been laid off immediately. Yeah. and uh, put some people back to work, um, you know, albeit as a temporary program, but it did help people. So that was the bottom line, and we got some services out of folks that we needed projects finished and completed around the city, and that worked out well. So it, it that's worked just out one for of, both. The it worked out for the for city the and for the person. Right. Yeah. So that that was uh, that was probably one of our greatest greatest programs so far. So it's funny how when there's when there's something type of tragedy, sometimes innovation creates. Exactly, it does. It does. It brings people together, and mm -hmm. uh, we had to think outside the box. And, yes. and the mayor and some others certainly did that. And I thought that program worked out well. Um, yeah. You know, we've done some other things. Um, we were able to uh, help our local Main Street organization, we gave them a grant to, so they could help with some renter's assistance for some of our businesses downtown uh -huh. to help with rent relief. Uh, proud to be able to partner with them on that. So it just, it, it, it was, yes, it was a horrible time for our country and our city, but um, people pulled together and we got through it and now things are on the upswing. Um, pool op our pool opened yesterday. <laughs> yes. I can't be more excited about that, and I know a lot of kids are too. Yes, that was so, great. I'm yep. sure parents are glad too. I think parents are too. I think Send parents the kids are ready down to for four yes, hours get the kids out and out and about. So, yeah. Yeah. well, now just so everybody knows, we we talked about the pool the other day. Yes. But just so they know that there's two shifts at the pool. There are. In um, order to comply with the CDC. We had to follow CDC guidelines. Yes. Our our new parks director Seth Pennington's doing a fabulous job. Yes. Um, and, and keeping up with all the guidelines, yeah. making sure, bottom line, he, he wants to make sure everybody's safe down there. Right. So we did have to split things into two shifts for sanitization purposes. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know that there's going to be a huge disruption because of that. I think people still want to go out and swim, and um, my understanding is going to get rather warm towards the end of this <laughs> week. So Ooh, yeah. I think we'll see people in the pool even more. So oh, great. we were glad to... Glad to get that back open. Yes. Well, we just wanted to remind yeah. everybody about that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. So now, then with the development, you have some developers that are kind yes. of asking questions. Um, so. Yeah, back to the pandemic a little bit. That slowed that process yes. quite a bit. Um, the good news, um, we still have some developers that have an interest in Madison, albeit um, it's pushed back timeline a little bit, probably okay. between six to nine to even as much as 12 months possibly. Um, but it is a, it, the good news. They are still interested. They haven't crossed this off the list. So good. Um, I think we could see some things happening. Um, I would like to speak on the development side a little bit. Um, I've gotten some calls. I know the mayor's gotten some calls. Well, and how come we can't save pennies? How come we can't save Gordman's? Yes, um, and that's that's a big issue here. It is a big there's, issue. There's people that aren't going to have jobs that work there now, exactly. and then it's going to eliminate a, a resource for the community. It is. It is pennies has been a staple in all over the country, honestly, for, for quite a few years, right. and a lot of people shop there, um, but that decision was made at the corporate level. Right. It was a financial decision for their entire company. is struggling um, all over America, quite honestly, um, so not really anything the city could, could do or offer to, to change that decision, and the same thing with Gordman's. Um, those right. decisions are made in boardrooms around the country that they look strictly at the numbers and the performance and just not a lot of local city could do to try to keep those there. So right. hopefully that operator or that center will step up and I know they're probably trying to market to new right. new clients. So And if if those companies wanted to stay, they would have approached you and asked you how what yeah. can you do yeah. for yeah. us? They would have reached out for us if and, it and was possible. We had no conversations with, with right. those folks. So right. it was pretty much a foregone conclusion unfortunately. So right. just gotta hope to fill those buildings back up. And and in a few years, maybe they'll Absolutely. come back. Absolutely, it's a nice center. Better. Um, it's it's anchored on each end by two good tenants, and yes. I think uh, those can be filled back up hopefully in a year or two once once things calm down with the virus. Yeah, wonderful. Well, we'll have and to watch we'll for have that. To watch. So yeah. now, if people want to get in contact with you, yes, it's going to um, be very easy. It How is easy. It's probably the easiest thing going now for economic development. Um, yes. The, what, the mayor made it a priority, um, not only in his campaign, but once elected. Um, he wanted a seamless transition with economic development, and he wanted economic development to be located uh, as a city department. And literally, I am right next to the mayor's office in City Hall. So uh, that, has its, that has most of the time its pros and cons, so yes. it works out well. 
Um, but um, no, I'm in City Hall and yes. uh, 812-265-8300. And so, uh, that is how to get a hold of me and uh, a moment's, uh, moment's call away. Right. The other thing it does, it allows economic development to work closely with all our departments in City Hall, our planning and zoning department, yes. our building department, <clears throat> our streets and sewers and water departments. Um, even police and fire play a role um, yes. in economic, our planning department. Um, yes. We've got a great program going now, our stellar, or I'm sorry, our um, um, neighborhood revitalization right. program. Um, that That's going as well as our stellar program. Um, well, I think it's great because as a business person, I'm thinking I can walk into City Hall and I can talk to everybody we, I need um, to. We want to make it a one-stop shop. It, it's much sense. easier yeah, because really if I have is. to go to five or six different buildings yeah. to figure out what I need to do, that becomes a major chore for me because most most people don't exactly. have time. The last thing we want to do is send somebody like yourself, a new business person coming to town. Well, you have to go down the street two yes. blocks. You have to go over here. Yes. You have to call that department. We want to try to make it as seamless as possible, and I think we're we're well on our way to oh, doing that. So I, with I'm impressed with the planning and zoning departments and and uh, Nicole Shell at our preservation department. Um, makes life, you know, easier. Right. We streamline some of the permitting processes through that department. So, a lot of positive steps to make it a lot. We are, in my opinion, a lot more business friendly probably than we than we have been maybe in the past. Oh, wow. And uh, really open for business. Cool. So, looking forward to the rest of this year finally to, to get some things rolling. Right now, now as business owners. Sometimes if they're looking to come to town and do things, they really don't want everybody to know they're nope. coming yet. Nope. So if they want to meet with you... I will meet anybody anywhere, anytime. Privately. Um, privately. Yes. I've got several locations around town we can go that yes. are, are, are fairly confidential. And, awesome. Uh, be glad to do that. That would be, that would be yes. very helpful to yes. some people. Some people don't want to come into City Hall when they're scouting a new location. I understand that. Well, there are people in there besides... Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. So yeah, it's open to the public. It's a public building, right. so they're a little uncomfortable with coming in. So I've so you meet them either in Madison or I've even met companies in other cities. Right. So, so you can do it confidentially, yeah. however exactly. it works for them. Exactly. So this is wonderful. Yeah. So, so one more time, tell them your phone number. 812-265-8300. Awesome. All right. Yep. Was well, there anything else we need to cover today? No, I appreciate you reaching out and, and we're getting the word oh. out and uh, this is great. So I, I've well, enjoyed Well, we it. look forward to having you back. We'd like I'm glad. To keep glad. this up and, yes, you know, Yes, I'll be back month. at some point, give you an update. I know the mayor does as well. So <laughs> He does. Um, when we can... Well, we can slow him down yes, a little. Yes, he is a man on the move all the time. He so, is. Yep, he's a busy guy, which is good. Wonderful. Well, Matt, we really appreciate you well, coming Well, Debbie, in. thank you very much. I enjoyed it. You're welcome. Glad to, glad to do it. So. Great. Okay. Well, as for our sponsors, we appreciate you for making all of this possible. And as for you, thank you for watching.